A word of warning. If you're easily offended by cannibalism, death, torture, and fascinating facts about the human body, this series may not be for you. Therefore, listener discretion is advised. Cannibalism. Could you eat a whole human being? With the help of a doctor, a scientist, and a chef, I set out to see if it's possible. Cannibalism, part 24, DNA. No matter how thorough a cannibal cleans up, it's the tiniest part of a human body which will always convict them. 2007, Canada. Robert Picton was convicted of murdering 26 women, having ground their bodies in a meat grinder and fed it to his pigs, or it is claimed to the public. Forensic anthropologists used soil sifters, as all that remained were tiny traces of human remains. And without a body, the case may have collapsed. But with the DNA of 80 profiles found on his jacket, his boots, and on his freezers, he was sentenced to life, and later admitted, I killed 49. I planned an even 50, but I got caught, as I got real sloppy. Every human is 99.9% .9 genetically identical. But that 0.1% difference comprises a 3 billion letter long genetic code, with its combinations so infinitesimal that even identical twins are genetically different. And with our 36 trillion cells containing 6 feet of DNA, if our genome were to be stretched into a single thread, it would stretch to the sun and back 10 times only it would weigh just six one trillionths of a gram. The oldest DNA discovered so far is over two million years old, with the DNA of Richard III able to identify his remains after 540 years underground. When we die, our DNA lives on in dead cells, but when DNA loses its purine base, known as depurination, it breaks apart at an atomic level. If buried, it can last as long as 10,000 years. Exposed to the elements, it can last just a few weeks. But subjected to stomach acids, after just two hours, 80% of the DNA is destroyed, and within a day, almost all of it has dissolved. If a serial killer buys sulfuric or hydrochloric acid to dispose of a body, that leaves a trail of clues. But with 99% depurination happening at just 37 degrees Celsius, the temperature of stomach acid, it's as efficient as a liquid crematorium, and it's entirely untraceable. The problem is that before a cannibal even feasts on Steve, our average UK male, that day, He's already shed at least five eyelashes, 50 to 100 hairs, 10 litres of sweat. It's estimated that he's left 140 usable fingerprints and having sprinkled 500 million dead skin cells everywhere he's been. 1975, Pennsylvania. Lindy Sue Beichler was found with 19 stab wounds and a knife embedded in her back. Police said the suspect's DNA but with no name, the case went cold. Until 2022, when that DNA was uploaded to a genealogical website, police surveilled 68-year-old David Sinopoli, and getting his DNA off a discarded coffee cup, he was convicted 48 years after the murder. So paranoid are serial killers, that in 2003, when South Korean serial killer and self-confessed cannibal, dubbed the Raincoat Killer, cut himself opening a safe. He burned the whole house down to destroy his DNA. And that's the problem. We leave traces of ourselves everywhere without even thinking about it. We imagine cannibals sinking their teeth into a thigh and tearing it apart. And although our Paleolithic ancestors had larger jaws and sharper canine teeth just to do that job, as omnivores who use tools to cut up meat and cook the food to make it soft, evolution has made us a much less efficient 
apex predator. In the case of Karl Denk, the cannibal of Munsterberg, almost a century after his crimes, DNA tests are being used to trace and authenticate the 30 to 40 victims he cannibalized and sold at the market as meat. The problem is, even those of us who aren't cannibals are mucky buggers in their daily lives. And if you think that some of these facts about cannibalism have been unsettling, get ready to be grossed out. In Britain, just once a year, 36% of people wash their bedsheets and only 18% wash their jeans. 25% of men wash their underpants after five washes, compared to 55% of women, with 6% of women washing their bra after 10 washes. I mean, how can a cannibal hide the evidence of a crime if we can't hide the evidence of a pizza? To cut up a body requires knives, saws and sinks. And although Robert Picton's farm was a forensic nightmare, the average person's kitchen is no better. In a study of a thousand people by a British kitchen retailer, 13% of sinks are only cleaned once a month, 4% of people never sanitize their worktops, 8% are unlikely to clean the chopping board before or after cutting meat. And with vomiting being very possible in a cannibal, as humans are toxic, studies show that your sink has more E. coli than your toilet. But before a cannibal has committed a crime, the evidence to convict them may already be out there. In 2005, Dennis Radder, a sadistic serial killer of at least 10 people in Kansas, was arrested. His killing spree had gone silent for 14 years, and as the police only had circumstantial evidence of his guilt, the only way to prove it, and to stop the new killing spree he was threatening to commit, was to get a sample of his DNA, or that of his daughter, by subpoenaing her pap smears. So although a long and laborious task, digesting a body may be the most efficient way to ensure a cannibal leaves no trace of their crime. But only if, pardon the pun, they've got the stomach to finish it. Join me tomorrow as we tick off all the body parts that a cannibal probably didn't know even existed. Uh.